Did you know that your vagina has its own natural pH levels, which can determine the overall health of your vagina? My name is Adrienne Rommel. I'm a holistic nutritionist and women's empowerment coach that specializes in holistic nutrition and wellness for women's sexual health. And I wanna to talk to you today about just how important our vaginal pH levels are to maintaining our vaginal health, especially if you experience chronic vaginal infections, this is for you. In this video, I'm gonna explain a little bit more about how it works, some of the signs and symptoms that you can look out for if your vaginal pH level is imbalanced. I will explain some of the causes of a vaginal pH imbalance, and then I'm gonna tell you what to do if you are experiencing chronic vaginal infections that could be caused by this chronic vaginal pH imbalance and how you can bring it back into balance. Okay, so we all took science in school, right? And you probably learned about pH levels of different things. And when we refer to pH levels, we're referring to something that is either acidic or something that is alkaline or basic. So just to give you a bit of context, our vagina has its own pH levels, which is normally more on the acidic side. It's normally between a 3.8 and a 4.5 on the acid alkaline scale. So it is, it does fall more in the acidic category. So our vaginas are acidic. And the reason why is because our vaginal lubrication, our natural vaginal fluid is more acidic because it helps to fight off any kind of harmful bacteria, any kind of germs or anything that can negatively impact the health of our vaginal microbiome and our vaginal flora, which consists of both good and bad bacteria. So our vaginal pH levels are really, really important in maintaining our vaginal health because when our vaginal pH levels are thrown off balance, whether it be too far on the acidic side or too far on the alkaline side, it can cause infections, common infections like yeast infections, bacterial vaginosis, and some STIs. And the reason why is because when our vaginal pH levels are thrown off balance, it weakens the mucosal layer in our vagina, in our vaginal walls, which helps to protect us against harmful infections. And a yeast infection, for example, is more acidic on the vagina and a bacterial vaginosis infection is more basic or alkaline. So now that you know a little bit more about how important maintaining our vaginal pH levels are, I'm gonna give you some common signs and symptoms that you can look out for to identify if your vaginal pH is thrown off balance. Some of the most common signs and symptoms of an imbalanced vaginal pH are a strong and unpleasant vaginal odor. And there are two distinct odors that I'm gonna be referring to, one that's associated with yeast infections and one that's associated with bacterial vaginosis infections. So the odor that comes along with a yeast infection is typically like a sourdough bread. It's yeasty. It smells like yeast. <laughs> the odor that comes along with a BV or bacterial vaginosis infection is a bit different. It's a little bit more pungent. It can be sour. It can be metallic but the most prevalent odor that's indicated as a BV infection is a very fishy smelling odor. And it can be really low key. And for some women, it can be really, really strong. Some other common signs and symptoms of a vaginal pH imbalance, which are also related to both BV and yeast infections are itching, burning, inflammation, redness, swelling, and pain, especially during urination or during sex. 
And when you have these symptoms, it can be difficult to identify what kind of infection it is, whether it's a yeast infection or a bacterial vaginosis infection. But the most distinct way you can tell the difference between the two infections are the odor that comes along with the infections as well as the discharge. And that is the last common sign and symptom. The discharge that you get when you have a yeast infection is normally white and cottage cheesy, so kind of like clumpy. And the discharge that you have with a BV infection can be either gray slash white and lotiony, so really thick and you can almost like you can rub it together in your hands or it can be watery and loose, but a lot of it. So now that you know what common symptoms and signs to look out for to see or feel if your vagina could maybe have a pH imbalance, let's talk about some of the common causes that cause a vaginal pH imbalance. Number one is your diet and lifestyle. If you are eating a diet that's high in refined processed sugars, high in carbohydrates, high in processed foods, junk foods, foods that are high in saturated fat, and anything in excess like caffeine and alcohol, this can be contributing to your vaginal pH levels, throwing them off balance because a lot of those foods are very acidic, which can make your vagina swing to one end of the pH spectrum to the other end of the pH spectrum. So it really can throw off not only your vaginal pH levels, but also the good and bad bacteria that thrive in your vaginal microbiome that help to fight off these infections because a lot of those bacterias feed off of sugar. And when you're eating a diet that's high in sugar, whether it be from sweets like donuts and candy and ice cream and baked goods and pastries and chocolate to even something that's really high in starch, which converts to sugar in the body as it goes through the digestion process. If your diet is high in sugar, in carbs, in any foods that cause inflammation like gluten and dairy, which all convert to sugar at the end of the day in your body, you could be feeding these bad bacteria, causing it to overgrow, which can also contribute to throwing off your vaginal pH levels, causing vaginal infections. Your lifestyle is also a huge factor. How you're managing your stress, if you're a nicotine smoker, if you, again, drink a lot of alcohol, consume a lot of caffeine, use recreational drugs, a lot of these things can cause a lot of stress on your body and can create a lot of acidity in your body. And it's especially bad if you are a smoker or if you have a partner that smokes that you're having sex with can also impact your vaginal pH levels. So your lifestyle plays a huge role as well. The next cause is ejaculatory sex. When you are having sex with your partner and they are ejaculating inside of you, their sperm is much different and it is way on the alkaline scale. Actually, the semen has a pH of 7.2 to 8.0 normally. So while your vagina's acidity pH levels are over here, semen is way over here. And it's so crazy how the body works. The body is designed to do that on purpose for fertility reasons. But if you are experiencing chronic vaginal infections like bacterial vaginosis and yeast infections, if especially if you are experiencing them after ejaculatory sex, that could be the cause. And with a lot of the clients that come to me, they're getting these infections immediately after they have sex with their partner. The next cause is medication. If you have been on long-term antibiotics, which is kind of a catch-22 because if you experience chronic bacterial vaginosis infections and you go to your doctor, they're gonna prescribe you antibiotics because it's a bacterial infection. But the antibiotics can lead to more bacterial infections. 
it's a bit of a vicious cycle. And if you also have been a woman who's taken long-term oral birth control, that can also impact the health of your vaginal pH levels, both antibiotics and the birth control pill. So if you have been on long-term antibiotics and the birth control pill, that is also a cause of throwing your vaginal pH off balance, causing these vaginal infections. The fourth most common cause is douching. Douching is the worst <laughs> because it, a douching is a, solu a pre-prepared solution that usually contains artificial and fragranced ingredients mixed along with some liquid that you put up into a tube and you basically put inside of your vagina to clean it out. But because these ingredients are often artificial and very harsh on your vagina's natural environment, on its natural microbiome, it can strip away all that good bacteria, causing the bad bacteria to flourish, causing your vaginal pH levels to be thrown off balance, causing vaginal infections. And I wish there was a disclaimer on these douche packages, maybe there is, but the vagina is a self-cleaning organ. You don't need to douche. And if you do douche, just be mindful that it is potentially causing more harm than good. And last but not least, vaginal lubricants can also throw your pH levels off balance, especially if they contain the ingredient glycerin, which actually is a form of sugar. And this is really important for women who are experiencing vaginal dryness because it is really important to understand that your vaginal lubrication could be causing vaginal infections. And it's important to look into alternative methods. And I'm gonna be providing you with some recommendations in the next couple of minutes. Now that we understand more about the vaginal pH levels, why they're important, some of the signs and symptoms to look out for, what some of the common causes are, here are my top tips on how to manage and maintain your healthy vaginal pH levels. Number one, change your diet and your lifestyle. I can't tell you how key this is because you need to get to the root cause of these issues. Oftentimes when we get a vaginal infection like bacterial vaginosis or like a yeast infection caused by these pH imbalances, our doctors don't really give us much information other than slap us with a prescription and send us home and hope for the best that it's not gonna come back, but it usually does. And that's because the medication approach doesn't get to the root cause of the problem, which is your gut health. So you want to include all of the things that I talked about in all of the videos, <laughs> but you want to include the rainbow of fresh, fruits and vegetables as good quality as you can. Eat the rainbow, eat them in all different colors and shapes and sizes. As natural, eat as natural as possible. I always say, if it grows, eat it. If it doesn't grow, don't eat it. That's my rule. <laughs> Eat good quality sources of lean protein, avoiding the protein that's high in saturated fat. You wanna include gluten-free whole grains that are low starch and low sugar. In there, you also wanna change up your lifestyle. Managing your stress is super key because a lot of these pH imbalances, vaginal infections are triggered by stress. So managing your stress is really, really important. If you're a smoker, a nicotine smoker especially, I know it's, I can't, I can't even imagine how hard it must be to quit smoking, but it's something that you really need to seriously consider if you are experiencing chronic vaginal infections and enjoying everything in moderation. And if you don't want to eliminate caffeine and alcohol or any of your recreational things that you like to do. Enjoy them in moderation. Also with your favorite foods, you don't have to cut everything out cold turkey completely. It's all about moderation. I like to follow the 80-20 rule. That really helps me to live my life in balance with my lifestyle, with you know exercise and sleeping and being really healthy and active, but also being able to enjoy my favorite foods and a couple of drinks on the weekend and not restricting myself, but also being mindful that I'm choosing not to eat and do certain things for a purpose, which is my vagina, because that's really important to me. Tip number two is use condoms 
or avoid ejaculatory sex. And I know this can be hard for a lot of people, especially if you are in a long-term relationship and you are used to having unprotected sex. But if your partner, if having sex with your partner is causing your infections, you need to start thinking of different ways to manage it. Do you both need to shower before having sex so that there's no bacteria being exchanged? Do you just avoid, do you have sex without condoms and just avoid your partner ejaculating inside of you? Or do you just choose to wear condoms? Do you talk to your partner and say, okay, hey, maybe we also need to look at your diet because your partner's diet can also affect the pH levels of his sperm, which can affect you. So that is also something to consider when you are looking at rebalancing your vaginal pH levels to maintain them and prevent your vaginal infections from coming back all the time. Number three, avoid those douches. You don't need them. They're terrible. You don't actually need to put anything up inside your vagina because your vagina inside is a self-cleaning organ and all of that bacteria needs to replenish itself naturally just like it was meant to. If you put anything up there, it's gonna throw off. Even garlic, I've heard some people treating their yeast infections with garlic. I would not recommend that because it's too harsh. Garlic is such a harsh herb and that can really actually cause more harm than good by burning the inside of your vaginal walls. I've heard this, I've never experienced it, but if you really need to feel like you need to clean the external area, which is also known as your vulva, you can use water or natural soap. And you can also take a little bit of essential oils and drop them on a cotton pad mixed with some carrier oil. You have to be careful because they're strong but you can use essential oils like lavender and tea tree oil to just kind of freshen yourself up down there, especially if you're noticing that it has a bit of an odor. So these are things that you can do while you're changing your diet and practicing these things that I'm suggesting in the meantime. Number four is lubrication. You want to avoid any kind of lubrication that has the ingredient glycerin. I always like to use a water-based lube as well but sometimes I just like to use cold pressed, organic, good quality coconut oil. You have to be careful with the coconut oil because it's gotta be cold pressed and good quality. I have heard of some people getting infections from a lower quality, sort of cheaper coconut oil. So you wanna be careful with that, but just try to use as natural lubes and ingredients as possible. Make sure that you're looking at the ingredient list don't use anything that's scented. You wanna really be picky about the lubricants that you choose to use if you do use lubricants and just make sure that you're looking at the ingredients list and choosing something that's as natural as possible. And number five, avoid wearing tight clothing. You gotta pick the right clothing. <laughs> You also want to avoid sitting in anything wet, whether it be a wet bathing suit or wet underwear or sweaty gym clothes. You want to make sure that you're keeping your vaginal area dry as much as possible because a moist environment just creates an environment for more infections. So trying to keep the area as clean as possible, as dry as possible, especially if you are prone to these chronic vaginal infections is super key. Also, you wanna let your vagina breathe sometimes. At night when you're sleeping, take off your panties and let her breathe, she needs that. Try to keep her as dry as possible. The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your health. Our goal is for you to become the best version of yourself, the bi-optimized woman. I really hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about vaginal infections and why maintaining your vaginal pH is so, so important. So if you like this video and you wanna see more videos like this, hit the like and subscribe button below and the little bell notification to get notified when I create more videos like this. And I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you thought about this video, if you've had any kind of similar experiences to the ones I've talked about, and if you have any suggestions for future topics that you'd like me to discuss. Thanks for watching, until next time.